Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew from the Guided Hacking YouTube channel and welcome to the third installment in the C programming tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering some combinational logic, possibly some if statements, some loops, and we're going to use that knowledge to help us build a function that will go through all the numbers in an array and add up all the numbers together to create one total sum. So. Let's get started. Uh, as you can see, I already created a project folder and I already created the main.c and I opened up my text editor. So I'm gonna go ahead right away and include scd.io because I know we're gonna have to get an output somehow using printf and I'll create my entry point. Perfect. And put the exit code there. So if you guys remember, return zero will exit the process. Int main defines where our code is gonna start executing and like I said, stdio is just a file that's gonna allow us to use the function printf. Perfect, so if statements, let's create a couple numbers here. We'll say int a equals three, b equals seven. Perfect, um, now we're gonna create this if statement. We're gonna say if a is less than b, then do something there. And then we're gonna say if that isn't true, but a is greater than b, then we're going to do something and then we're going to say if all else fails we'll do something there so obviously the only other clause for integers would be that they're equal so um here we're going to write a statement now we're going to say printf a is greater than b simple then here we'll do another printf we'll say oh wait did i do this oh sorry a is less than b here um, and then for here, we're going to do a is greater than b. Perfect. And then we're going to say printf here, a equals b. Perfect. So now if we go and compile this, I'll we'll call, it, call it add num. Perfect, there we go. We get A is less than B, which is correct because A is three and B is seven. So now if we flip this sort of and make A 10, recompile, run, A is greater than B, that is true. So we can see that that is working. I'll even test it and make sure that it works for when they're equal to each other. We'll compile that, add thumbs, A does equal B, perfect. So. Okay, now let's change it up a little bit and let's make a number counter that will count to the number 10 um, using conditions like this. We're going to use a condition. We're going to make sure that a number is less than 10. If so, keep adding to that number until it is equal to or greater than 10. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it int counter. I'm going to set it equal to zero to start. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start creating a loop and this is called a while loop. For this loop to be valid, counter must be less than 10. So while counter is less than 10, we're gonna print F, we're gonna say counter equals percent D so we can print out the value of counter. And then we're gonna, after that, increase counter by one. So counter plus plus is the same thing as saying counter plus you know, plus equals one or counter equals counter plus one. It's the same thing, but counter plus plus is the shorthand of doing so. So like that, we will now compile and run. And you see it will count all the way until counter is equal to 10 because if counter is equal to 10, that means it is no longer less than 10. So perfect, I will now show you a loop that does this a whole lot simpler. We're gonna, it's called the for loop. So we're gonna type in four. And in here, we can define counter now and set it equal to zero. We can say now, as long as counter is less than 10, counter plus plus. So this loop allows you to do three different things. The first thing is we can define a variable that's technically out of the scope of the for loop. So just like we did before, but that would go here now. The second thing is the condition. For this loop to be valid, this condition has to be true. And then we can do some operation of some sort. So in this case, we just increase counter by one. So we can go ahead and print up now, say counter equals percent D slash N and type in counter. Perfect. So let's go ahead and compile that. 
and run it and you can see that it still works. So perfect, I'm gonna clear out my terminal and we're now going to look at a little bit of a stranger loop but it's similar to the while loop except the condition is read at the bottom. So it's done like this, it's called a do while loop. Do while and we'll, well, we'll make another int counter up here, int counter zero. And while counter is less, or sorry, is less than 10, we will print f counter equals percent d slash n. So we can print out the value of counter each loop iteration and we will increase counter after that. So the d big difference between the do while loop and the while loop is that no matter what, it's going to enter the loop. The while loop checks the condition usually up here first before it even enters the loop. But in this case, we're no matter what, we're gonna enter the loop and it's gonna check the condition at the bottom. Instead of the top, it's gonna check it at the bottom. So perfect, if we were to go ahead and compile that and run that, you can see that that still works. So perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a function using these loop techniques that we just learned to create a, sorry, I'll rephrase that. We're gonna create a function using the loops that we just learned to add up all the numbers in an array. So first things first, let's go ahead and create that array. I'll say int numbers equal, sorry, int brackets numbers equals, we'll say one, four, five, two, seven, one. And you can see because I left this empty, it will automatically create an int array that has six allocated sections for integers. So we'll have indexes zero to five, perfect. Now let's go ahead and write the function. So we know the function is going to have an output that is a number because the output is going to be um, a sum of all the numbers in an array. So we know that, so we're gonna have it be a return type of an int, obviously, and then we'll say add nums for the name. And then the first input is we want an int pointer um, because it's going to point to the first index of this array. And then because this is a, this is a continuous block in memory, we'll just give it an index of one or an index of X, for example, right? And it will go to whatever index in the array that is. So st if we start at index zero, right, then we can index one or then we can index two and so on. And since we're using an array, we're going to need some sort of number to keep track of how many numbers are in that array. So we're going to give a count because this is going to be used for the loop mechanic as I'll show here. So first we need to create a result value. Perfect. Default that to zero. And then I'll say four int i equals, we'll say zero. And as long as i is less than count, i plus plus. So we're going to first start with the value of i and set it equal to zero. The loop is going to loop as long as i is less than the inputted value of count. And then each loop iteration, we're going to increase i by one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say result plus equals nums i. So i is an index. So <clears throat> first i is going to start at zero. Right? It's going to take num0 and add that to result. And then it's going to take nums1, which would be 4, and add that to result. And then so on, 5, and yada yada, all the way up until the end. But we need to make sure that we set count to 6. All right. So now all we have to do is return result. Perfect. I'll say int sum equals add nums now and I will pass it the array numbers and I will give the count of six because there are six numbers in this array. And then I can say printf sum equals percent d slash n and put sum, oops, sum like so, perfect. Compile that, run that. And it says sub equals 20. And if I were to add this, you know, this is 9, 10, 11, 12, all the, you know, yada, yada, 19, 20. So perfect. <clears throat> Alrighty then. So I'm just going to go over this one more time, but I'm, we're going to comment some stuff. So 
we'll add our default comments. We'll say, you know, include um, files for printf, we'll say, right? Uh, we'll say um, define entry point, perfect. We're gonna say create an array of integers. We're gonna say get sum of all integers in array, perfect. And we'll say print sum. Um, now up here, what we're gonna say is function adds up all numbers in array, perfect. Uh, we're gonna say loop through array and modify total sum return sum perfect so i hope that makes sense i'll go ahead and just compile and run and show you again that that is working and if i were to add a number let's say like nine i would need to change this now to seven and boom perfect um what I can also do is with an array, I can say size of numbers, and that should also work. Um, besides, I would need to actually, because size of the array is gonna be, you know, seven in this case times four. So we need to make sure to divide it by four because each integer is four bytes, right? So we need to divide that number by four and it should still work, perfect. So. Perfect, perfect. Um, we can also write another function um, to return the size of a, um, or actually return the amount of indexes in an array, I guess. So <clears throat> we'll say int um, get, or get total indexes, and it will take an int array Sorry, writing that wrong. Int array, like so. Um, and it will just simply return um, size of array divided by size of int. Perfect, because size of int is four. Um, now if we test that, we can just say here instead, get total indexes and put in numbers perfect oops there is something wrong here we'll return size of int pointer okay so this is an issue of pointers versus arrays in this case so <clears throat> it's taking this int array and um, <clears throat> converting it into a pointer, um, it looks like, but I'm going to go ahead and test this anyways and see if it works. It might not though. Yeah, it didn't work. Um, it's because size of array will be four. Um, so four divided by four is one. Yeah, it's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we can have it that way because it's actually converting this into a pointer which is gonna mess the whole thing up. So we have to do it like this, size of numbers divided by size of, perfect. All right, so I hope that makes sense for today's video. Um, it's gonna be all that we cover for today. But besides that, make sure you let me know down in the comments if something isn't making any sense or you want to see more of something else but besides that i mean i'll catch you guys in the next video peace